Hey guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers. It is Sunday night, a little bit late because yes, I had the same exact issue this evening that I had last week, where as soon as I hit go live, it said it was live and then it said can't stay live. And so it quit me. So hopefully um, you didn't get too bamboozled by that and um, you'll be back with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh my computer to make sure that we're publishing. Maybe I will. We'll see what's going to happen here. Okay, it looks like I might be live. Uh, hey, Karen and Jean, I see that you're here. And um, I'm glad. I hope that that video didn't... Uh, hang on a second, I'm typing and I can't do that and speak or it's going to be just gibberish. All right, hopefully Stephanie can find her way. Hey, Jean. Hey, Julie, glad to see you. Hey, other Jean from Florida and Sharon and Janet. Thank you for joining me. And Karen, hey, good luck. Why did I say good luck? Because I'm having good luck tonight all of a sudden. Okay, so we are going to make a fun little card using the barn door stamp set and the sliding door framelits that go with it. Um, and this is the card. I made it as a postcard, so it's only got a front and a back, and I will show you why. My thought is I would put the card into the envelope like this, and then when my recipient gets it, hopefully they'll figure out that all they gotta do is slide the little car door to the left, and you have your inside sentiment. So, front sentiment and inside sentiment, just like that. And then I didn't put anything on the back. Oh, that's the envelope. I didn't put anything on the back except a little wreath. And this will be a great place to write a message to whoever I send this to. So, let us commence, shall we? All right, so let me show you the framelits right quick. I've done a little cutting ahead because, I mean, seriously, how often and how many times can I show you how to cut with the Big Shot? If y'all need me to do that. Hey, Karen, thank you, it is cute. It's a great little set. Hey, Denise, hey, Jacqueline, Gr glad you could join me. So this is the framelit set that goes with it. It's the sliding door framelits. It, you can get this bundled and, and save 10%. Um, barn door is a clear set and it also comes in wood. Um, and that's fine. The couple of times that you might want to use the, the uh, Stampamajig to line up the sentiments, that's easy to do. Mostly your door, I would assume you're going to stamp on a piece of cardstock and cut it out to use as a door. So let's go. I'm go I am going to show you a couple of things that we'll do with the Big Shot because those are kind of the players. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about card cuts. These will be on the uh, website tomorrow. So my card front and the back are both thick whisper white and they are four by five and a quarter inches. And then I used uh, regular whisper white. I just needed a little thinner so that it would show. Uh, and it, those are four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then my card base is five and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half, just like a regular size card would be. And then I have a little piece of plain whisper white that is, uh, the sentiment and it is two and three eighths by three and three quarters. And I don't know if you can see it here, but I have found the center and lightly scored down the middle so that I know where to center my two sentiments. Okay. Yes. Barn doors are so popular right now. And, um, one of these days I'm going to have a barn door in my house. I am. I really am. In the meantime, this looks really realistic, I think. So let us go ahead and get started. I'm going to set these aside, except I do need one of the dies. Now this is the die right here that kind of is responsible for all the magic. This is the one that makes the track upon which your door slides. So these cute little doodads right here that look like the uh, like the runners for the door are actually not working at all. It's completely dependent on either washers or in this case I used half inch punch outs uh, to make the the sliders and I'm going to show you that. Now here's a little tip. The first one of these I made 
I wanted, um, I just wanted a black mat. And I was going to use a white card base and a black mat. And that didn't work out. And the reason for that is because it made this track, top and bottom, really, really apparent. So my tip would be make your card front and the mat behind it upon which the card front rests and shows through make it the same color and that kind of disappears that track okay all right so let me show you what we're going to do i'm going to take one of the pieces of the thick whisper white cardstock let me get mr big shot over here This may be pretty close, but I think you'll be able to see what we're doing. Now, what you want to do is you want to not center this in your card front. You want to put it a little bit towards the bottom. That way you've got room at the top to put that uh, the, the slider bar, that black slider bar, so that you have a spot. Hey, Stephanie, glad you made it. Hi, Andrea. Hey, thank you for joining. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, hey, Sherry. All right, so let's get that lined up and run it through. Like so. All right. And we'll get rid of the thin die adapter and hang on to everything else for a second. And you can see that what it did is cut these two sliders, okay? So now you're gonna wanna remember this is the top, this is the bottom. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make some shiplap. So, uh, because you know, I'm all about Joanna Gaines, who isn't. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it upside down in the, in the folder. This is the Simply Stripe folder and it's new in the occasions catalog and I'm putting it upside down so that it debosses the front because in my world, shiplap goes in, not out. All right, so now we're gonna just emboss that right quick. Hey, Paula. Thank you. Hey, Linda. Alrighty, there we go. And Mr. Big Shot can go away. And now I have shiplap. Yay, shiplap. And we'll get rid of this stuff. Oh, not all of the rest of it, Mary. Hello. All right. Now, now we get to play. Now we get to play. And we are going to play. Now, if you've seen any of the videos out there, you can use washers or you can use like pennies. Um, I am pretty certain that my husband somewhere, what is shiplap? Oh, shiplap is a type of sort of tongue and groove paneling that goes on walls. If you've ever seen the show Fixer Upper, where Chip and Joanna Gaines go in, Joanna is a big fan of white shiplap with black accents. Um, so yeah, I was, I was channeling her here. So it's just a type of paneling that's kind of a farmhouse thing and it's very, very hot right now. It's totally on trend. Did you hear how I said that? Like, you know, like I knew what I was talking about. Okay. All right. I, like I was saying, I am pretty certain that we have got washers out the wazoo somewhere, but I did not want to spend time looking at them Hey, Ann. looking for them. And so I measured my little track here and I decided that I could make little cutouts. So what I have is my half inch circle punch and I'm just gonna make eight, okay? Because you need four pairs of two and you're gonna make little sandwiches. With dimensionals. And I now I, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, I don't know if it makes the, uh, if using washers would make it a little less uh, ooh, snug to move, but I'm happy with this and it weighs a whole heck of a lot wet, less than what would essentially be eight washers there, okay? So that's what I'm using. 
and you can use that or no. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm making some sandwiches and I have myself a cup, some, some mini, mini Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm putting them in the center of my little circle cutouts. And then I'm gonna peel the tops off. Okay. Now, I'm going to put each of these in the middle of a track, two on the top, two on the bottom. Now, what did we just learn there, people? Yes, exactly. Don't take the covers off the dimensionals until you've stuck them in the little track, because hello, Mary. Okay, so we'll fix that. All I'm doing is I'm just finishing my sandwich with the second one of the little half inch uh, circles, okay? So we're gonna do two on the top. And we're gonna do two on the bottom. Like a yay. Like yay. Okay. And then here's the last one. Okay. Okay. Oh, that didn't really line up very good. You kind of want them to be lined up because, not because you can see them, but because, you know, it's a point of pride. All right, so now you see these just slide along that track. Handy. Yeah? All right. So now let's put our door on. And all I'm going to do is take a couple of glue dots, and I'm using a couple because you want it to be good and stuck. Because um, this is going to probably get a lot. I can ant would anticipate that when someone gets this card, they're going to spend a lot of time going, Ooh, look how cool that is. So I'd put a couple of glue dots on the top of your little sandwich. And we're going to do just the left side first. And I'll show you why in just a second. Just the left side. Okay. So, um, I already cut out a door. Shoot, I can't get it off the table. And all I did is just stamp the door in uh, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I cut it out with the die that is in the set. And remember, this is kind of a nice little rectangular die as well. So, you might want to use it for other things. Uh, so, I'm just going to push my sliders, the left sliders, across, and then I'm going to line it up so that the door is straight up and down, and you can't see anything under it, like that, and I'm just adhering it with those glue dots. And now I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Very easy. Just so you know, I've only done this one other time <laughs> to make the sample. So if I can do it on video, even sort of halfway after doing it once, you guys have to know it's just not that hard. All right. Hey, Nancy, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. All right, so I've pushed these two all the way to the right. And I'm just going to kind of lift up on the door like this and bring it over and line it up like so. Now, the reason you push those all the way to either side is so that you get full range of motion of your door, right? It'll go all the way left and all the way right, like that. Done, easy. And we have a sliding barn door. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to adhere it to its mat and just so you know, I have a heck of a time when I do white on white oh, or tone on tone, I just have a heck of a time getting measurements all done. Okay, so what we're going to use is our foam adhesive strips, okay? And we're going to get pretty generous with them. You want to put one right under the track.
like I said, you're gonna be generous. And right at the top of the track, you don't want it to impinge on your sliders. So make sure you give it a little bit of wiggle space there. And then we'll do the same on the bottom. And what you're doing is you're giving the sliders room here and some clearance to, to do their sliding thing, right? All right, and one over the top like that. And then we're gonna put one up the side. And that one's a little long, so we'll cut it off. Hey, Nancy. And I'm just gonna stick this right here. You don't really need it, but I'm putting it there. Going with the theory that if a few strips are good, a bunch of strips must be better. Y'all, I was sitting here this evening making a card and I happened to glance out the window and I saw a ruckus in the pond and I looked closer and it was the Loch Ness Monster. There was a Loch Ness Monster in my pond. Then I looked a little closer and realized it was just two beavers playing like crazy and also catching a fish. Now, I know that beavers are pests and they make messes and they catch your fish, but they were really cute and they were having a blast. And so I was very impressed. Wayne was less impressed, less happy about their presence. So he went down there to see what they were doing and they left their fish. So now they've killed one of our fishes. I don't know which one, maybe one of the big bass and left it. Hopefully they will come back in the dark of night. Okay. Now, there's the top, and we're just gonna line this up on our also whisper white mat, like so, like so, there we go. And now we have a card front. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Isn't that so cool? Okay, now, now we're gonna give it some hardware. Hey Sue, glad you could join, and Jean, you know, it could have been a blue tarp, except I have the blue tarp weighted down in prison. So it wasn't a blue tarp. Um, hey, Julie. Yeah, I think that they were really cute playing. They were just having a heck of a good time. All right. So we're going to put, this is, just squint your eyes. This is a black wrought iron track. And you can tell because it's black and because it's wrought iron, sort of. And I am going to use uh, white liquid glue, just a very little bit. You could also use your fine tip glue on this, but I really kind of like this glue the very best of all of our glues. Now it is completely decorative, but you do want it to kind of look like it's doing its thing. So center it over the top of the track best you can. Maybe a little higher. That's why the glue is handy. There, and you can kind of use your shiplap grooves as a guide. All right. And then, now you guys, seriously, are these not the cutest little hanger doodahs? They look so real, it's crazy. Yay, stamping up. So remember, these don't do anything. So what you wanna do is you wanna make your roller part overlap visually the track so that it makes sense when you look at it, yeah? And you would put it, if this was an actual door, this would be your frame, and this part in here would be um, sunk in, right? So you want them on the, the, the frame, not on the sunk in portion. And only put glue on the flat strap portion, not on the roller part, okay? And then, and this is where your little tweezers come in, so very handy. Go like so. And we'll get a second one. And these are just cut out of black cardstock, you guys. <laughs> that you're all going, oh, duh, Mary, we thought maybe that was 
Daffodil Delight. We didn't know. Are you saying that was black? Huh. Okay, so try to even them up because you want it to look like you meant for your door to roll straight across the track instead of cattywampus, because cattywampus is no good. And then finally, look at this. This is the cutest thing. Look at this little wrought iron handle. Gosh. And all of these little dies are in that sliding door framelit set. Little tiny bit of and put your handle on and there you go. See? Easy and peasy. Hey Mary. Nice to see ya. Okay, now I have a I have a stamp and dimensional cover going rogue. There. Okay, come out. You guys, every once in a while I'll look down, Finn will come see me. And I look down, and right on the no on his nose is a Stampin' Dimensional cover. Right on his nose. He just carries them around. They, they go everywhere. Have you noticed that? Or is it just me? All right. So I have also cut a few... I can help you with notes on your iPhone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've cut a couple of little uh, accent pieces. And the first is the sign. And I cut it with its die, so I just stamped, I stamped it in Memento Black ink on Whisper White and cut it out. And then I stamped this wreath and bow in Cherry Cobbler and just cut the bow out. And there's a die that will just cut the bow and a die that will cut the whole wreath and the bow, which is kind of handy. The second wreath, which we're going to use later, is also fun. It's got a die that cu cuts the wreath and all these flowers. And then there's a die that cuts just the three flowers all together. And then there's three little dies that cut the flowers individually. So you really get a lot of um, versatility with this stamp set and die. So that's kind of fun. So all I did was I stamped this little sign. Hey Karen, glad to hear that you have dimensionals going rogue everywhere. Hi Donna, glad you could join, I appreciate it. Um, and I wanted, the, I really kind of was going with the black and white with a few pops of color, a la Joanna Gaines, because, you know, she's kind of my idol. So what I decided to do was to color the background of the sign, and I used my light uh, Stampin' Blend, my Smoky Slate Stampin' Blend, and just gave that a quick, easy color. Just to give it a little bit of dimension in there. And the blends are nice because, well, you know, they blend because of how they blend and stuff. Yeah, it's right in the name. It has to be true. All right. And so then what I did is I used liquid glue for the sign, and then I'm going to stamp that bow on with some dimensionals. So we're going to put that. Is that a dimensional? No. I'm going to put that right about there. Kind of centered up. And then I'm going to put a few. If I can find. Oh, they're right in front of me. Good Lord. Good Lord. Okay. Put a couple of little mini dimensionals on the back of my bow. My bow. Hey, Christina. Hey, Neoka. Hi, and Ginger. How are you? Uh, yes, Karen. There are a lot of pieces in that. In the framelits. There's no doubt. So just. Remember, remember, if you put them on magnetic sheets, do like I do and put your label at the top, put the name of the framelit, and then put how many pieces are in that framelit set so that you can kind of keep track of what is where. Okay? So I've loaded this bow up with some mini stamp and dimensionals. You're probably thinking, Mary, you could have used one large dimensional. True. I probably could have but that would have taken so much less time than putting four on and removing the covers. So why wouldn't I do it this way? Okay, and then I'm just gonna pop that right over. Um, oh, I wanted to show you another a little quick die in the set that's kind of fun. There's not a matching um, stamp for it, but this little doha right here makes a square wreath. So you could cut that out just with uh, out of cardstock and use that in green or whatever and then add a bow or add some flowers to it and it would be a little more modern kind of wreath which is kind of fun. Here's that uh, the the wreath 
die cuts I was telling you about. This is the one that cuts the wreath and all the flowers together. This one cuts the three flowers together, and then these three cut each flower individually. Okay, there's that. All right. Okay, so that's kind of the front. Now what we're gonna do is make ourselves a sentiment, okay? And first I'm going to get that little extra bit of glue off, because it'll drive me batty until I do. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, pull out my other, my small piece. Hey, Kathy. Do you cut everything out once so you know what the shapes are for? Um, I did not on this one, but I did watch Brandy Barnard's video and she showed that. And so the only one that was less than self-explanatory was that uh, square wreath. And even if you just even look at it, you'll see pretty easily what it's going to do when you cut it out. But that's a really good idea, Karen, to do that ahead of time, especially when you get open these die sets that have like 40,000 little pieces and, and not always can you tell what they're going to cut. So it helps to cut them out once perhaps. Okay. Now I'm going to get out my stamp -a jig and I'm going to erase these because no, I did not leave my stamps on my blocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our sentiment and that sentiment is going to slide right in here like this. So the way we're going to do it is I'm going to stamp both sentiments. I've got a little bit of a hickey up here. Hang on, people. Let me see what I got going on. Oh, I'm just bumping into the edge of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp both sides. I'm going to put a couple of little embellishments on, and then I'm going to push. Well, I'll just show you. That'll be so much quicker. Stop your yakking, Mary. Just stop your yakking. And get on with it. Hey, Karen, how are you? Glad you could join today. I appreciate that. All right, we're going to use two sentiments. One of them says, may your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through your door. So I'm putting this on the left side and the inside sentiment on the right side of my sheet. All right. So we'll go ahead and do the other one first. And I'm just going to do this in black again, and then I made a couple of little flowers um, so that I could just add those little pops of color. My tweezers are, uh-oh, uh, I think they're Eek, E-E-K. Um, and I don't know that you would need those particularly, but what I like about these is that they're, the, they're, they're pincer type. So when you squeeze it, it opens. When you release it, it closes, which is nice because then... You can, for example, if you're making one of those double bows, you can make all your loops. You can stick it in there and let it go, and it'll hold it for you. And, oh, by the way, it'll sit uh, right on your work surface, so it's very handy. All right, so I'm just inking this up with my Memento ink, and I'm going to set up my stamp -a jig now. Okay. And we're going to put this on the left side and I'm just kind of centering it possibly cheating the slightest bit to the left to the outside not by much but just a little all right and pick that up so static doesn't move it ink up my stamp set Eek success. There you go. And yes, you can find them at Michael's or you can get them on Amazon. And we'll just do straight down, straight up. Good. And we'll put, clean that up and then put it away while I'm sort of stalling a little bit to let that memento ink dry good. It's not quite so um, slow to dry as the archival ink, but but still, I can, I can smear black ink quicker than almost anybody y'all know. Okay, now we'll go ahead and set up our stamp -a jig for the second sentiment. Okay. And 
line it up with the other one. Not that you can still see it, but it's it's a point of pride. And if you cross stitch when you do your knots in the back, you try to make it neat, right? Yeah, it's just trying to stay neat with everything. Hold for a beat. There we go. All right. Put this black ink away so that it doesn't get the best of me. Now, as I said, I made a few little flowers earlier. There's no rhyme or reason to my color scheme. They just, it just struck me as nice. So, I am going to use a little bit of liquid glue. All I did was ink each of those flower sets and cut them. There's a small, medium, and large die, and I just cut them out with the, the Big Shot. So pretty straightforward. And I'm going to put some decorations. Now, just note, in case it wasn't obvious, you probably wouldn't want to use anything with a dimensional here because it wouldn't let the door get by it, right? And I'm going to put the little one over here, like so. And then I think I'll put this one right there, like that. Okay, now watch how I put this sentiment on. The first thing I did was push the door all the way to the right like that and then I'm putting some liquid glue on the card front itself not gobs and tons people you just don't need it and then I'm sliding the other end in like this and setting it down just like that Okay. And then I'm going to push the door to the right, and I'm going to take off my little flower. Why did that happen? We'll put it on when we turn when we pick it up. Didn't have enough ink on there, did I? Okay, not ink, glue, Mary, glue. All right, and we'll put him back on where he belongs. A little more glue, because he wanted to be. A little stinker, a little stinker flower, little stinker. And then I'm going to pick up, very gently, pick up this side of the sentiment and put some ink underneath it and stick it back down. Done. And there we have our card front ready to go. Okay. So, let's quick like a bunny, make the back, and then we can put it all together and we'll be ready to rock and roll. And that can sit and dry. And you little blue flower, sit and think about what you've done. Okay. All right, so this is the back, and I'm having to double check because, you know, tone on tone, there's no telling how screwed up I'll make that. So, all what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp that wreath right here in this bottom corner. And I'm going to use a uh, marker to rubber. I'm going to use Old Olive for the wreath portion and just color in the leaves like so. This technique works quite nicely on rubber stamps. I'm not going to use my stamp in my jig because it's just not that critical. And then I'm going to use my Bermuda Bay marker for the little flower, the little flower. And my cherry cobbler for the medium flower. And daffodil delight for the large flower. Like yay. You, you, I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing, but I'm blowing on the, you know, how you, like you would do if you were going to huff on your glasses to clean them. I'm doing the same there to just kind of reactivate and moisturize the ink. And then I'm going to put it right here in this corner, like so. Hold it, hold it, and pick it up. And perfectly fine. And then I'm going to take a couple of my pearls, 
and put them in the center of the flowers like this. Hey Stampin' Up! If you're listening, I would take an entire sheet of the little tiny seed pearls. The little tiny ones, those are my favorite. So if you just get on that Stampin' Up! Sarah, are you listening? Are you listening? Hello? And there we go. Okay, so now we'll put some, use some fast fuse and put that onto its mat. And then we're going to put it on our card base, which is a postcard kind of a kind of a setup. Amy, you're correct. I know she is. I know she's listening. Hi, Sarah. It's so nice of you to join me tonight. I'm honored. All right, and we're just going to put that on its white mat, and then we'll put it on our card base, which, if you'll remember, is four and a quarter by five and a half, just like what would be the card front on a regular A2 card. Just use some fast views. turn it over and I'm going to use liquid glue on this just so that I'm not squishing it by run to run the uh, to run the fa fast fuse on it so we'll use some liquid glue also that'll give me a little squiggly wiggle room when I put it on crookedy which is almost exactly what you can count on me doing the first time also it's really good to double check okay I've got it right side okay good and then we'll set this right there, like so. All right. And there we have our card, people. So like I said, I would put this in the envelope with the door pushed cl clear to the right. And then when they open it and pull it out of the envelope, it would be ready for them to push it, open the door to see the other part of the sentiment. But let's do a quick envelope so that I have a whole card set ready. And so here's the thing. I tried um, embossing the flap in the Simple Stripes teeth, and that was an epic fail. So it just completely decimated the flap. It's a little too stout of a teeth. So I fell back to, thank you guys. I fell back and repeated my wreath my flowery wreath on the front and the back. Um, so what it did to the envelope flap was it just completely tore it wherever there was an embossed line. It just, it just gave up. So um, take my advice. I mean, you can certainly try it, but you best have another envelope ready to go because that's not going to work. I can just about guarantee it. All right. And then we have cherry cobbler and Daffodil Delight, like that. Make sure the envelope is right side up, unless you want to put it in the wrong spot. Huff it a little bit. The huffing is something that is helpful to help reignite uh, that ink when you use the stamp, uh, the marker to stamp procedure. And it brightens it right back up. So I'm just gonna do that again right quick, and I'm gonna do this Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate it. Because, so here, here's how lazy Mary is. I am only going to stamp this one time on the envelope because, not that it's very difficult to ink this, but it takes a hot second. So I'm going to make it look like I'm, I have some artistic bent, and I'm going to but do it right over the edge of the envelope flap. Oh, cherry cobbler. All right, you guys, I want you to call Joanna Gaines and tell her that since I have honored her and her predilection for shiplap by making this card, she should come and completely remodel my home for me. 
I'll even pay her. I don't even care. I'll pay her to do it. She just needs to come do it. And there we go. All right. So you end up with a lovely little card that fits nicely in its envelope. I think it would be pretty thick if you had it doubled over. And I don't really think you need it to be doubled over because really all you need is a place to write a message and there it is. And how fun is that? I hope you all liked it. Um, Sue, I'm glad you came in. Please do watch the replay. My blog post tomorrow, I'm just going to tell you straight up, I don't give you all the step-by-step -step instructions. I kind of go through it generally and I hope that people will watch the video because really this is an easier thing to show as a video than it is to try to talk about. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I'll see you next week and I hope you're enjoying the celebration. Bye-bye guys. Thank you.